Coming up on this episode of Seen a Nerd Podcast, we give our thoughts on whether or not Echo episodes one and two are worth your time. We also give updates from the world of Star Wars. James Gunn shares a update on Peacemaker and much, much more coming up on our podcast now. Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. You know, we we took some time to look at the schedule, and I think things are falling into place. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) It's 2024 content and what we have to look forward to in the upcoming weeks. Um, but but right now tonight we're gonna talk about Echo. <laughs> yep. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Oh man, Echo. <laughs> and a little bit of news too. So. A little bit of news. I yeah. mean, I, it around this point right now, 2024 has consisted of the most award shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The writer strike and the actor strike basically like backloaded everything. So award shows that were like nominated for like season ones so like the bear for example mm-hmm. uh, yeah it uh you know of course they they you know jeremy allen white did win best actor in a comedy um but um but it was for season one not season two but clearly because i think the voting like actually like either ended around the time that season two was on or something like no, that like but, may yeah. may or april it ended yeah and and Bear season two came out in June, and so many people have pointed that out, and it yeah. just messes with your mind. But that's why I've always thought the Emmys were so weird because it's TV shows. But what is that period of time of right. yes, if it drops, like it's it's so it always feels late. Mm-hmm. Um, has felt that way because I've all often watched it. And people have gotten awards, and I'm thinking in my mind, but that was like last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and it's yeah. trying to keep, tr- yeah, and it's trying to keep track of like the eligibility rules. I mean, because really, I mean, I know there's, you know, also this week there was the Critic Choice Awards as well, and you know, of course, Oscar voting, I believe, is starting, I believe, this week. Um, and so, of course, you know, that's coming later. Um, I guess Oscars is what in March. I want to say this show this year, um, but again, because of the strikes, everything got pushed back. So it just, yeah, it's, it's just really messing with my, my mind as far as just figuring out eligibility periods and windows of, you know, for like TV shows, for example, you know, from X from September of 2022 to, uh, you know, June of 2023 or whatever, you know, however the seasons work, it definitely, uh, you know, when I was seeing when I was seeing some of the announcements, uh, I guess it was Monday night. Um, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I have to remind myself this is not for just the most recent season. It's for the seasons before, except for a success. Well, yeah, yeah I was going to say some of the yeah. shows, it is the most recent season. Yeah. It just it, it when those seasons dropped. And voting, it, it it really becomes a mind fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like last, um, but yeah. I feel like last week we spent a lot of time talking about best supporting actor in a drama series with Succession, um, with the rivalry between Kieran and um, Pedro. But but it turn it comes I come to find out like Kieran for the Emmys, I th- I could have sworn you told me differently, but Kieran was nominated for best best actor, best lead yeah. role, yeah. and and not supporting actor, and that's where they placed Thomas McFadden in the supporting actor role. So last week when I was talking about how Thomas would be the biggest competition for Pedro out of the succession class, it's because I I didn't realize and I misunderstood. About who was placed in what category? Yeah, well, I think too. I think also we were talking about the Screen Actors Guild because uh, they had their their nominations the same night, we were, same time we were talking about the Golden Globes and as well and and stuff. So yeah, um, too but yeah, you're, shows too many categories. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like my God, 
Um, yeah. But but I I mean now maybe Karen will have a third child. That's all I took away from that Mies. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's, that's what I saw. <laughs> um, yeah, but he got. Um, I guess he got. Yeah, I guess both the Emmys and Critics' Choice. I mean, he did win Best Lead Actor in both, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I feel as though he's been sweeping his category, um, yeah. which I was thinking about it after I saw he won the Emmy. And I know why. I know the scene specifically. I've said this before when Zendaya won her, like, second Emmy for Euphoria. Um, and you can tell. It, it's amazing how performances that really stand out, it all goes back to one specific moment. Mm-hmm. And it's not that they were crap the entire rest of the season. No, it's just that in that moment they captured something that was very surprising very human um humanistic and it just Mm -hmm. it like damn damn um so so but i still i still say like pedro just wait for second season (laughs) (laughs) you'll get yours i i would be shocked shocked the the last of us ended yeah. And Pedro walked, never took home an Emmy. Okay, I'm right. um, just would be shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, and I, I can't say more. Like you, I don't want to spoil anything that could potentially happen in the second season of The Last of Us. But uh, yeah, um, it, he will definitely get some love. I think at some point, um, you know, with, with that potentially with that second with what's to come. Um, yeah, because I mean, and two is so many shows are that, that have ended this year too. I mean, when you think about um, the slate, it's it's going to be pretty wide open uh, for for some new for some new shows next year um, well, in, in some in some categories. So, well, House of Dragon is coming this summer, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just when you think new shows. Some of the reta- returning ones are gonna start to rival. Yeah, I mean HBO. It's just that type of channel where <laughs> it will put out some duds, but when it has a good show, you gotta yep. wait until that series is over. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, and I and I don't know. I don't know because fantasy is still very interesting how it plays out with right. any award show. Um, yes, I know Peter Dinklage, how many Emmys he walked away with after Game of Thrones ended (laughs) a shit ton, I think. And this would be something interesting to look up. Like, did he win more awards or did the show win more awards? Yeah, true, true. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because I'm pretty sure he won it more for his category than the overall show did. Um, but... But we'll see. And and I remember, I still remember how some of my favorites from the first season were treated during awards season. And so if that shows anything, um, I don't know how, how well second season of House of Dragon will do in yeah. awards. But they have my heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So moving on to Will wants to talk about how James Gunn shares on IG that he has written seven of eight episodes of Peacemaker season two. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's January and I think back to this time, I guess, God, was it two years ago now? Uh, with Peacemaker season one and how a show that I don't think anyone after watching the Suicide Squad film would ever think that we were going to get the genius of Peacemaker season one. But uh, yeah, uh, Gunn did share that um, he is almost finished. The only thing he has left to write is the finale for season two, and it is part of his first phase of um, his new DCU. So hopefully, we'll be hearing some news about when they're going to go back and start filming some filming this season. I mean, I guess he's got to get Superman Legacy finished first um, since he's directing that, but. Um, but you know, so it, it may be a while. Uh, but I guess I guess they're filming Superman Legacy now. So, um, or I guess they'll be starting as soon. So maybe we'll get a, a better sense as far as when season two of Peacemaker is coming. But he did say that also there he was going to have another epic 
opening to to rival the the first season. So that that first season opening, I mean, to, to this day, I still like think about it. So that was it's gonna be pretty hard to uh, to top to top that. But we should. But if anyone can do it, he can. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Will wants to put us all to sleep as he gives updates on Star Wars projects. I know you're done with Star Wars. I know you're done with Star Wars. But there's actually, this is just a follow-up to the Mandalorian and Grogu story that uh, broke last week that when Lucasfilm shared that they were going to be making a film with with our, our lovable Baby Yoda so they can sell more Baby, you know, Baby Yoda dolls and stuff. But uh, somehow the internet thought that because of that movie and because everyone just assumed that when um, they had announced that Daisy Ridley was coming back to do a, a Ray film, that the Ray film was now delayed indefinitely or, or whatever. But Lucasfilm yeah, sh- shared that, uh, no, it's not. Uh, that the Ray film is still going forward. Daisy Ridley is still committed to the project. Uh, Jeff Snyder uh, had a big news dump uh, in his newsletter about what's going on with Star Wars right now. I mean, basically, they backed up the Brinks truck for for Daisy to come back and, and play the character. Uh, Daisy also just talked about how fans were very... I saw an interview with her re- yesterday, actually. I, I, don't, I can't remember when it was filmed, uh, but I think it was pretty recent. It was on, I think, a French network. But um, about her excitement for the project um and it looks like yes mandalorian grogu will be the probably will be the first film out the gate uh, i think we're looking at a, a may 2020 uh release date for that film but um but yeah the the, the second the ray, the ray film where she will be Created a new Jedi Order will probably will probably be the second one, and then of course there's the whole Filoni film that um, he's working on, uh, you know, pulling together all the things from the Mandoverse together. So uh, that, that's the latest in the in the Star Wars realm. But uh, if you're hearing anything about the Ray film being delayed or whatever, or taken off the schedule or canceled, because I mean, God knows they've canceled like so many projects, but this one has not been canceled or delayed. It hasn't been. It hasn't been canceled, but it hasn't been shot. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Anything's possible time. with Star Wars. There's still time. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing too with it, uh, I guess Sean Levy, who's uh, doing uh, Deadpool three and also Stranger War, Stranger Worlds, Stranger Things. I'm sorry, my Star Trek leak seeped in there for a moment, but uh, he also is looking at doing a Star Wars film, which supposedly may also have ray in it as well just, so yeah i just need people directors actors to just stop with the star wars like we get it you're fanboys we get it that's yeah. part of the reason why you became blah 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 but have you talked to all of those once fanboys probably still are but directors and actors who either a said the same thing, got what they wanted, and then qu- quickly got kicked off of the project? <laughs> or have you Dame, talked to John Boyega about Star Wars? Yeah, or, or Dame, Lind- yeah Dame Lindelof, who... Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I just, I, fe- I feel as though everyone says how small Hollywood is, and yet y'all are not talking about, to each other about the reality of the the business and with these big productions so so that's that's lovely that you have this idea for a great star wars movie but if you get what you wanted be careful because the reality is going to be probably really different and 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 also have you looked at the comments on all all of the new star wars stuff i mean i'm not the only one who's kind of like done with star wars and i'm not I'm not done done. I'm just kind of, I don't, I feel as though the current direction they're going on with most of these stories, it it just, it, it's boring. <laughs> a, a fresh, it, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I get you. I mean, it's, it would be, it, they do need a fresh perspective. Uh, and I think 
Mandalorian season one was, even though it was still set right after Return of the Jedi, I think, you know, it was a different vibe, uh, at least for me, at least. Uh, and I, but I do get your point. I do get your point though, because after the after the the sequel films, the third prequel tri- trilogy, the JJ, you know, reboot of a reboot. Right, right. right. It's it's the, it's the sequel yeah. trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it kind of left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Yeah, and yeah. and so I find it I find it interesting how they think that bringing back Ray is going to allow them to continue to expand on what they currently had and I'm I'm thinking in my mind I don't want a Ray movie without Kylo. I'm sorry. You left me with one fucking kiss. <laughs> That's not <laughs> enough, okay? And so, and, it, it and just, you're the yeah, yeah. Well, and you're I'm, the fan. They're yeah, the fan that they're thinking of. That's why they're leading with Mandalorian and Grogu. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> so everybody but loves that. Mandalorian and Grogu. Like, I'm kind of. I feel as though I've invested with them multiple TV shows or seasons of television, and now you're gonna do a movie, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't like this whole. I have never been on board for the concept of you have a TV show and after a few seasons, now it's a movie. Mm. There's just something weird to me about that where I just, I think we've talked about in the past as we're watching various shows, like the pacing of a TV show versus the pacing of a movie Mm -hmm. and how, and I think specifically last week when we're talking about um, what if this was brought up, Like, what if season two probably would have made for a really interesting movie, you know, with all of those different stories that have, um, like, just expand upon the whole Captain Carter of it all and make a Captain Carter movie. That that would have been fine. Mm -hmm. Probably a bit more well-paced rather than divvy it up into these half-hour episodes. So so now I've spent like 40 minutes a week with Grogu and Mando and now uh, like their story is just going to get condensed into a two hour, probably three hour movie at the rate movies are being filmed these days. And yes, I am not looking forward to being in that theater and watching 20 minutes of walking in sand because you know. (laughs) There's going to be a walking in sand sequence. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing that I need a producer to come out and say about Star Wars. Like, moving forward, we will no, ha- no longer have sequences of people walking in sand. In like, sand. On that, yeah. Go away from Tatooine. We don't want to go back to Tatooine. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and honestly, Will, I don't even think it's always on Tatooine. I think there's no. other planets that just also happen to have sand. And it's just True. a lot of walking, talking, and sand. And it's too much. Yeah. We already got yeah. Doom 2 coming out God knows when sometime this year. And yep. and there's a lot of sand in that movie. But but anyway, so off <laughs> my, my Star Wars soapbox. <laughs> I just one last yeah one before we move on from Star Wars just one last little thing uh Diego Luna did note that he was filming his last he's doing his last week bit a week of filming for season two of Andor which um it, speaking to your point about going in different directions and really really landing really well by doing that uh Andor season one was definitely definitely um yeah because because yeah. Rogue One was a good movie yeah. I'm just saying. Yep. <laughs> I'm just, it's not surprising to me. To yeah. me, it's like, why make uh, continue making movies about Rey? Her trilogy, people argue, is the worst. <laughs> so yeah. I just, I don't understand these decision makers, but whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That brings us to the last bit of news, and um, which will lead into our main topic of discussion tonight. Um and this news, I feel as though, I'm sorry, it's 2024, but I feel as though this has been said before, but I guess it's confirmed by Jeff, Jeff Snyder that Eldon Henson and Deborah Ann Wall will return as Foggy and Karen for De- Daredevil Born Again. Um, Actually, I would like listeners to go back mm-hmm. in our catalog and find the episode where we first talk about Born Again, and I could have sworn our producer, Mr. Will Polk, told me that these two would not be 
involved in this project. And I told him, there's no way in fucking hell. <laughs> See, but here's the thing. <laughs> They they were not involved with this project. It's like basically Marvel listened to pe- to you and other fans, and whenever you they give shot fans way too much credit, way too no, much. Credit. They, I mean, it's 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 true. I mean, basically, they filmed before the strike. They had filmed like what six episodes or however many of the Daredevil: Born Again. And they saw what they had and they like, fuck it. This, this is not working. And this is, and then after the fact is when they brought Foggy and Karen back because they're like, Oh, okay. We know the formula that works. (laughs) Let's get these people back in here. And and it may be a one-off. I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. I mean, Jeff just basically said they're coming back, but you know, it could be a one, it could be a one episode appearance or it, it could be very integral to the, rewritten story i don't uh, you know we don't know yeah. but uh, they're coming back they now are coming back because the first they were not yeah 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 i i yeah i'm not gonna go into that but um <laughs> if they were really listening to the fans yeah. we would have gotten confirmation that the punisher would be in it too oh, he's in it. Season two of daredevil is superior yeah but he's already confirmed yeah, Barenthal, yeah, Barenthal's okay. back. Yeah. So, so okay. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, I know how many episodes Karen will be in. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't good. This isn't going to go well. Man. <laughs> um, just based on what my understanding of what the, the show is called and the comic book run, it seems to be based on the pieces are there, people. <laughs> of what's gonna happen and and see and that's why i was so shocked at the beginning of it all when when you were when you and they were very adamantly saying no they're not going to be involved and i'm thinking in my mind how in the hell do you do this without at least karen (laughs) it doesn't make any (laughs) sense the math ain't mathin but no so well i'm glad it took a strike for them to get their pieces in order hopefully they pull it off um we did just see Daredevil in the very first episode of Echo. Mm-hmm. And um, I have to admit, I a, was first of all like, whoa, too soon. But simultaneously, I was just the entire sequence before he even arrived in that scene of Maya on her first mission for Fisk. Mm-hmm. I was blown away by the um camera work yeah it it was so good and it reminded me of the camera work they used in the seasons of daredevil that really i think caught everyone's attention with the fight choreography because it just it felt immersive and it it feels because of how they use the hand cam Mm -hmm. um they it feels like a video game and not in a bad way, yeah. in more of like you're you're in the middle of the chaos, literally, and you're spinning around and observing all of the different things. It's not let me just place a camera here and two people are going to fight in front of it like that. Yeah. That can be very boring. So I really I really was impressed by that. Um, and And I hope we get more sequences because I have to admit the act the big action sequence in the second episode and will probably thought this that i was going to bring this up while he was watching it because where are the fucking lights okay <laughs> i couldn't see a damn thing of what was going on in the train and mm-hmm. whenever they have these sequences and it's all dark i get it it's night but you know what's out at night a moon stars yeah. you can figure out a way to have some light where I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to listen to bang, bang, whatever. They'll, they'll, they'll do whatever. They'll succeed in whatever they're trying to do. I don't, I don't care. I don't have to watch it. Whatever. Um, but yeah. But yeah. So, so to go back to the first episode, Will, what are, what are some of your opening thoughts about Echo? Yeah, opening thoughts. I, I agree with you on the, um, the, the fight cinematography and choreography. Uh, it actually, to your point about the uh, the uh, 
film camera work and stuff. I mean, it was it really was the going back to the uh, I guess the one take um, mm-hmm. where you just set you know to set things going. And uh, I actually listened to uh, Screen Screen Crush did a a great breakdown of of the fight choreography uh, right. and 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 showing and, and a reference that said the very thing that you mentioned, which is what you saw in the in the Daredevil Netflix shows that same one take uh, style being utilized and, and just the evolution of, you know, seeing that type of fight choreography versus, you know, other things, even like Batman for Batman begins versus Batman for Superman, how things change and, and other, and other, other fight scenes. So I agree with you. That was one of the highlights for me, as far as the, the, the first episode, mm-hmm. uh, as far as the, overall faults of of the show so far i've only watched two episodes because uh i thought that they did a good job really weaving in the the native american folklore backstory really get into her 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 background in a very but also but but it did it in a way that was also very like mcu (laughs) uh which was both a good but also detracted a little bit for me to be honest because i'm like okay it's it was i i love the representation i love the you know build you know really showing her 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 cultural foundations and 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 all but at the same time i'm like okay they're weaving into superhero stuff (laughs) you know and Uh you and, know and, what's and, interesting, Will? Yeah. Like, I totally understand what you're saying, but to me, it yeah. doesn't feel I don't go to the superhero stuff. I go to why do why does this come off as Avatar? Yeah. Like why like and and I don't know what it is, but between between the ancestor stuff that is happening in Echo. And what we, that episode from What If, the, um, I forgot her name. Ch- yeah. Uh, Kalori. Kalori, who actually, who was generous oh. enough, the actress who plays Bonnie voices her. And in, in What If. The actress who plays Bonnie. Oh, oh, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, um, very cool connection there. Yeah. Um, that whole episode reminded me of Avatar. And I just... I kind of wish that the MCU would find a way to do this without that. Mm-hmm. Like with with being very cautious of not going into the avatar of it all. And I and I understand why I would get that vibe just because I mean Will's never seen the movie, but it is and I'm not I have never seen the second movie, but I saw the first movie. And and I, the first movie is basically a remake of Dances with Wolves. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I have seen that. Yeah. that. But I just, I just, I feel like they have yet to figure out a way. Out of all the cultures that they have managed to incorporate into the MCU, they haven't figured out a way with um, Native American culture to to get it without going in that direction. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah, I mean, and because and I, I tell you, a, a film that that where they did it well was uh, the Predator remake, of, uh, Predator film that we uh, that was on Hulu uh, about a year or so ago. Yeah, uh, they, that was that yeah, that was was one that I really thought they did a good job of, you know, integrating. Yeah, we got this, you know, we're in a superhero world and stuff, and it was well, a super sci-fi world. But, you know, we respect the Native American traditions and the culture and and the, and all that. Uh, but I mean, but it, like I said, this was this. It also reminded me too, like, of a Blue Beetle, where the things I liked about Blue Beetle was the family aspects of it, and and, and so, you know, whenever we see Maya's family at the beginning and the shadow, um, play, you know, the shadow puppet play and and just sitting around the area talking and all that kind of stuff. Those, those, those were like the, the very good moments that really stood out for me. 
Uh, and so, you know, so it, it humanized the character early on because especially the younger version of her but the thing is with, with the first episode you know it was really like the first i guess that like the the first half hour was really like a a, re, a, a setup for people oh since, my god yeah it was like <laughs> hey hawkeye season one again. <laughs> it was not a setup it was the longest montage yeah. i have ever seen and and i'm ashamed to admit it took me until they got to New York, so the mom has died, yeah. and then and then it really started to set in as as we're getting caught up to present day. Like, oh my God, they're going full montage with this. Yeah. Yeah. This is the longest previously on. Yeah. <laughs> You've already seen this. We're gonna yeah. fill in some. I'm just like, oh my God, stop! But um, to to go back to the ancestor stuff real quick. Um, something that I think that they are not there there. I feel as though, in my opinion, they are, it's half baked just mm-hmm. because it's so far. And we've only watched two episodes, but in both episodes, they're named after one of her ancestors mm-hmm. and the openings always show, um, this new ancestor and they tell a story about them. But so far, I have not felt as though those stories about her ancestors are really doing a good job mirroring present day. Um, I feel like I feel like it's it's partly there, but it, it yeah. to me, I don't fully connect them together. Like it, they're not perfect um, foils for one another. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're touching on it uh especially with the play with with the echo because you know that's one of the things i do know about the character is that you know as far as how they've changed echo from the comic versus echo in live action uh where uh, well a couple things one they, they changed the native american nation that she that she's from uh because she was uh, uh i think cheyenne latin american in the uh in the comic book and she's a chocota in the in the live action uh but also her power set um i think i think what they're trying to achieve and and is the echo is because her power set in the comics was she basically was like taskmaster in the mcu where they, she they, she could mimic other people's fighting styles and take and that was the whole point of the, of the echo here i think they're trying to like show the echoes of the ancestors coming through in these flashbacks but the way that is edited and stuff i think it, it's kind of haphazardly edited sometimes um where this kind of doesn't flow um and so i get where they're trying to go and maybe as we get deeper in the episode in the in the series we'll we'll sort of see that sort of play out and we saw that in particular um, you know, in the second episode when she was on the train and her, her, her leg gets caught in the, in the, um, yeah. thing and they, you and know, they kind of the flashback end, to the, yeah. And at the end where I think, because then you get a flashback of not just Loak, but you, you get a flashback, uh, to, um, Chaffa, the first one, mm-hmm. and then also someone else who I believe is going to be, um, is what the third episode mm-hmm. the, the the name comes from that ancestor and i feel yeah. as though that one's going to be a little darker yeah yeah just based on the images we saw of that ancestor which you know it, maybe it's done purposely that it's not a complete mirror to present day just because it's an echo mm-hmm. like a reverberation um of these voices of these ancestors um and their past strength and um and making sure their people are okay um which something that also bothers me is or not bothers me but maybe is a nitpick i have is that we're introduced through the montage (laughs) yeah (laughs) echo becomes um maya becomes very isolated Hmm. from 
not only the fan, her New York family, her Fisk family, but from her, she returns to Oklahoma to her blood family. But she, she's also not immediately going to grandma's house. She yeah. is being low key. She's not immediately going to her cousin, Bonnie. Like she, there's a lot of issues of what happened and why, her and her dad left town to begin with that are unresolved. So it's not, so to me, these ancestors who are protecting their people, it's like Maya has people, but she also doesn't. She's, she's a lone soldier. And, Mm -hmm. and so I, I get that the, it's trying to, it's trying to make her realize like, Oklahoma is where the shit is happening and where she needs to be to protect yeah. those people. So, so I understand where it's going with that, but it kind of irritates me just because we're seeing the ancestors and I'm like, oh, they're protecting their people. And meanwhile, Maya, Maya's protecting in the weirdest way. <laughs> she doesn't know <laughs> how because she's basically grown up without a family. Yeah. Um, but. But yeah, so and and I do I like biscuits. Huh. Yeah, biscuits. Um yeah, he he's yeah, he's the Will does not like biscuits. I, I'm I'm warming up to biscuits. I'm warming up Will to biscuits. Will does not like biscuits. I'm warming up to biscuits. I like biscuits. Biscuits is kinda you know, I guess I think you everybody need needs the comic, he's the comedic foil. You need uh, you need someone because Maya is just she's too headstrong. Like yeah. you need someone to bounce off, and she's got all of these adults, her grandma and her uncle, telling her what to do, what she shouldn't be doing. Yeah. And then and then you need biscuits and grandpa. Biscuits. See, I like and grandpa. grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. grandpa. See, grandpa to me, is, you know, Graham Green of course, MVP. Uh, and so with like with with grandpa and and being that comedic foil and also helping her like you know take some of the edge off and, and helping her like you know like helping her with repairing her leg or just you know even like in the first episode after you know after um what happened you know with her mother dying and stuff and and mm-hmm. and trying to you know trying to you know, obviously, Grandma is very pissed off because I guess she knows what's going on with Maya's dad. You know, yeah. and and him and him being in both worlds of like being in the world of Oklahoma, but also working for Fisk. You know, in the criminal underworld. So, and 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 and, and understands that because of him being in both worlds is because she lost her daughter. Um, you know, with the because these folks cut the gut, you know, break the brake lines or whatever. Uh. And, and so I think, you know, so I think that, you know, that relationship is, is very important with, with grandpa biscuits. I know when he comes along, I, you know, he, he's the comedian. He is the, he is the, the guy there for the laughs and to take the, take the, I guess, lighten up the, lighten up the, the mood <laughs> in the show, because it is very, it is very dark and very intense. Um, and, and, and many, many elements with, with, with all that is going on in the episodes yeah and um i i love the sign language yeah um i i love that she's deaf i think that adds to the intensity just because Mm -hmm. having Mm -hmm. your main character be deaf Mm -hmm. there's so much silence yeah yeah oh go ahead no, I was gonna say with that silence, they they and they use they use that like to get back to the fight choreography. Yep. Um, uh, and and the sound editing that they use, like whenever mm-hmm. that was a, that was the one thing that really stood out to me in that first episode when whenever she was on that first mission for Fisk is how do you sound the heartbeat and like you know whenever you know both got both her heartbeat and the other guy when she was fighting his heart beating and you know being together but then to ratchet it up and then she snaps you know breaks his neck and you right. know and how she uses that to, to you know because she is deaf using her other senses to to be able to um you know to be a be basically be an enforcer and and i think that even though i'm not 
overwhelmed and that enthusiastic after watching these two episodes. The show's doing a good job mm-hmm. of making me more excited for Daredevil. Mm. Because very I because from the fight choreography callbacks to now we're talking about the sound design, they did such a good job in with the seasons of Daredevil about sound design just because he's blind so Mm -hmm. he relies so much more on sound and the Mm -hmm. way he he, through fighting he uses that sense enhanced sense to um to be able to um take down his opponents so so i feel as though we the show's doing a good job and it's also there was a moment and i'm not talking about the montage sequence where i was thinking about oh yeah this is this i get why they did this show after hawkeye i mean hawkeye feels like 10 years ago but there was a, i forgot about the element in hawkeye where he was hard of hearing and yeah. having pick up sign language and having to deal with that in the middle of all this chaos and and he meets echo who yeah. who's deaf and it's just it was a really good counterpoint and they even played with sound design there because of all of that that was going on so so i i i find it interesting the creative elements or the production elements that we're talking about and how in a show like Hawkeye that we were both kind of mid on, like there's that element that's like, oh no, that really did stand out. That makes sense why now we're here with Echo and that gets me more excited about this future project of um, Daredevil. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, to the to the point of the montage, those were, yeah, the, 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 the adding in additional scenes from Hawkeye and 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 really fleshing out uh whenever she you know was there you know and, and of course Ronan uh you know kills her father um but um it 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 it, it, it really bookended Hawkeye in a, in a in a sense of like you said from the technical standpoints that you just and production standpoints that you noticed but also uh really even though this is part of the Marvel spotlight and, and, and the whole idea of spotlight is to be able to just drop in. You don't need to know, you know, the, the chapter and verse of the MCU, but it still keeps the, keeps the links between the two, to the, this show back to the main MCU. Um, well, it's you, yeah. you, they had to d- remind viewers. Yeah. Not, not about necessarily Ronan, the Ronan of it all, but uh, w- the pivotal moment from Hawkeye season mm-hmm. one that involved Maya, where Maya shoots Fisk. Yeah. And and that all goes back to she thought initially Ronan killed her father, but Fisk gave the order. Right. And so and so you we needed that as viewers, whether you're new viewers uh, who ha- didn't watch Hawkeye or current viewers who did watch Hawkeye. If you're if you're if you did watch Hawkeye. I don't think a lot of us remembered. So we needed the reminder. You just needed to know so that you knew where she was and why she's suddenly in Oklahoma on the run and kind of there there is a power struggle, which 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 brings me to the next thing of we we didn't get we didn't get him yet. We know he's coming, but we, he ain't dead. Fisk is not dead. Right. He um he may he may be one eye less maybe potentially maybe. we don't know, <laughs> um but and and honestly, all it reminds me of is another really good moment in Hawkeye season one, which was when Fisk started beating people up. Yeah. Like and and Vincent Del, Del Nofro, like. He he gave that in all of the Daredevil seasons too. I don't know what it is, but but the strength of that man it's just terrifying. It mm-hmm. is terrifying. So yeah. I like if I I really do think that the show is just supposed to make you excited for Daredevil. Um and it's and it's doing a good job. 
Yeah. And I think now the more I talk about it, the more I'm reflecting on the the brighter points of Hawkeye, which makes me be like, oh, man, that wasn't as bad as I I initially yeah. thought it was me. Yeah. yeah. And and it's funny, even because I, I know whenever we were DMing earlier in the week, I, I, I knew that I was like, the jury's still out because uh, I had just watched the first episode of Echo. And I, you know, I, I was I was. I wasn't blown away. No. But I wasn't like this is this is uh, but I also wasn't like oh god this is terrible I can't right. I can't I can't watch this anymore. Uh I just thought it was you know I thought it was okay I, I think you know first episode coming out of it you know because of the montage and stuff but you make a good very good point is it 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 helped establish what her motivations right. are for bringing down, you know, whenever she's on the top of the water tower and talking to her with her uncle, Black Crow, about, you know, I want to be the queen. Yep. You know, so it, it it did it did help establish that. I didn't I I wasn't fully buying it to be honest. Um because I just felt because of the montages taking up half the episode, um it it, it just kind of felt performative. <laughs> as yeah, far as, I a hundred percent agree with you. Um as far as setting up the motivation, but then once we got to the second episode is, and when she does the first mission of, you know, utilizing the Mel, you know, you get into materials and, and setting the bomb on the train in, in, to New York. That's when I was like, okay, now things are starting to flesh out. Now I'm starting to, you know, I'm starting to warm up more to this show uh, you know, the, the sequence at the beginning of the second episode with the stick ball again, mm-hmm. I, I, I did feel like, I don't know, you know, I, 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 as a person of color and, and seeing, cult, you know, uh, cultural representation and stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm always super excited to see those things and see how they, and they really did. And, and, and just learning more about the show. I mean, they really, you know, stick ball is still played in the Chokata nation, uh, you know, utilizing the elements there. I mean, I had the ca- closed captions on. So whenever the other, the, the ringer uh, came out to um, when they had the, you know, he, he was Cherokee. So, you know, it gave, it gave texture to the fact that, you know, they were fighting for their land. And, and so, and I see what they're trying to do with these, op- these cold opens with the, with, you know, starting out with the ancestors trying to like you said contextualize that historical that, that, that event that happened with their ancestors in this case fighting for literally for that territory because if they lost this match the Cherokee were going to take over the the village mm-hmm. um and so you know and then you fast forward to present day it's Maya her struggle her her fight taking over Kingpin's empire so I'm seeing where they're trying to like you know, now that we're talking about it, I'm like, okay, I see where the show is going now. Right. right. And so, yeah. you know, so we, when it, we, it's one of those shows, I, I understand why they dropped all five of them at once, but it's now that we're talking about it, I'm like, you know, there's enough there. Maybe, and, you know, we still have three more episodes to go, but they could have really stretched, they could have possibly stretched this out a week to make this more buzzworthy because there are a lot of things in this show that you know if they're to your point about making it excited for daredevil and even now Hawk, hawkeye as well there are a lot of street level things that we haven't gotten in in marvel for a while Absolutely. that that really could, could be fleshed out more and and i i will say this as my kind of closing comment on um the first two episodes of echo is that i think the the biggest my biggest issue is I feel as though because we only have five episodes and because of the half hour montage sequence, Maya is still undercooked. She mm-hmm. is yes. as a character, she is not fully fleshed out as a lead should be, because yeah, we understand her motivations. We, we get it. But not none of her current actions are making me like, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Oh, I I wouldn't have expected that. Or or emotionally, I feel like I feel like a lot of it is 
her and just the story concept itself, it just feels a bit undercooked. And I think they're rushing. Um, but, but if they didn't, if they didn't know what to do to make it a fully cooked, then I'm glad they're rushing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I think to your point, I think that's why they released it the way that they did. Cause that's the other, I, I completely agree with you that while it's entertaining, it is a bit undercooked. And, and, and yeah. honestly, right now, I just know, like, like the moment we get Fisk, he's just going to take over the show. Like, his presence, I think, is going to just be, and and that's un- a little bit of unfortunate, but sometimes when you have a villain as good as him... Mm-hmm. Um, and we've even seen him and I found it, I found it so interesting. I don't know if anybody else was distracted by this, um, but how he very much like took my under his wing, saw something in her, but the man couldn't spend the time. This was her biggest red flag that she did miss. The man couldn't find the time to learn sign language. Yes. Yes, and had different interpreters each time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then again, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, no, it's Fisk. Like, I think it would have been more off character had he taken the time yeah, to learn true. sign language. Like, yeah. that wouldn't have made any sense to me because I'm like, yeah. no, you're a bad guy. Honestly, it's it makes me more mad at Maya where I'm like, Maya, think about it. Think about it. It's right in front of you. Why mm-hmm. wouldn't he have learned? If he loves you like he, you're his own, he would have yep. learned sign language. Yep. Oh, my God. Um, but we'll we'll see. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if she's going to murder one of the interpreters. That would be hilarious. Um, <laughs> well, um, I, I think that's it for us on Echo. Yeah. We're going to be covering the, the, uh, the last three episodes next week. But before I forgot, forget, um, I have to tell Will about yeah. a show I watched this weekend. Yeah. And um, it's a K-drama. Mm. So I, um, I've been hearing about, I've been hearing on the all the, all the talk about K-dramas to watch out for that are starting in 2024. And, and this one started like January 1st. And so I think... I think there was only four episodes available and it's a 16 episode season and the show is called marry my husband. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. And, and I, oh. I kept hearing people talk about how, how good this show is. And um, here's the synopsis and I'm reading this directly from IMDb. Okay. A story about G a time-limited woman returning back to 10 years ago and dreaming of revenge after being killed by her husband who had an affair with her best friend. <laughs> that is legitimately the presence of the show, and whenever I heard people bring up the show up, they would say that premise, and my mind would go, what kind of convoluted shit is that? Yes. <laughs> But then I got curious because everyone, everyone is saying how good it is. Mm -hmm. And I watched it and oh my God, is it a great show? (laughs) (laughs) Oh God. I don't know what it is, but it is very well acted Mm -hmm. and arguably as convoluted as the plot is because yes, Jiwon has terminal cancer on she she's on her deathbed she inadvertently finds out her hus- her best friend and her husband are having sex while she's on her deathbed and and in the middle of that there's a push and a fall and she's dead but she wakes up 10 years in the past and so essentially the premise is well if you have this time mm-hmm. n- now knowing what you know how would you do it differently? Huh. And there's there's a twist on top of it that I won't get too into, but but all I'll say is uh, is she may or may not be the only time traveler in this show. Um, huh. Ah. So, so it's a very well complicated, and I I like how 
I feel as though the rules are very much out there for us. But the writers manage to to make make it not as simple as her getting her revenge and being like, well, I'm obviously not going to marry him. Well, well, are like like if you don't, then who will like because mm-hmm. things have to happen. Fate has to play out. So yeah, so yeah. they do a very good job for a time travel show. It is very good. And oh my God, did it win me points when I'm going to spoil this, but I know not a lot of our listeners watch K dramas. And if you do, and if you're interested in the show, which I'm telling you, you need to watch it. If you have ever been curious about a K drama, I would start on this one. It's on Amazon. It's very good. We're, we've only just started. Um, but, and if you are going to do that, Stop listening and go and watch the show and then come back and listen to the rest of this podcast because I have to because Will's not going to do it and I'm going to tell him about something. <laughs> okay. okay, I yeah, I'm, I'm curious though, but I will. I go go ahead and spoil away. Yeah, yeah. So, so there, there, I called it right away that there's another character, this guy who's also a time traveler as well. And but but for the first five episodes, six episodes, they don't know that both of them have wound it up back in 10 years. They only think that they have. Right. Mm, Okay. And and so at the end of this episode, there is a quote unquote victory that that Jiwon has in and making making her her future more livable, per se. Huh. And um, in celebration, she goes out on the rooftop and she she puts on a certain song. And now this is 10 years in the past, 2013. Very important date. 2013. And she so she plays No More Dream by BTS. Now, this other character comes out and bumps into her. And notices she's listening to BTS. And he says, you like BTS? And she's like, yeah, well, I wanted to play Dynamite, but oh. I couldn't find it. And then he laughs. I don't think anything of this will. And this will all make sense. Just bear with me. Okay, and, with and he says, and he says, well, you know, I personally like Spring Day. And then... They they let they smile and then there's a moment where you see it on the G Wan's face and she realizes. Spring Day by BTS came out in 2017. Ooh. Dynamite by BTS came out in 2021. One, yeah. And so <laughs> as a viewer, I'm also while G Wan is realizing it, being like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, <laughs> any BTS fan knows that. <laughs> of course, you play No More Dream because they debuted in 2013. <laughs> huh. That's, and 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 by the end of it, because of that, they're just staring at each other, and that's where the episode ends. Where it's like, oh, oh wow, oh now they know. So it's, that. So, so it's a series. Yeah, it? yeah, it's a okay, it's a TV okay. show. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, um, yeah, I was, I was just, oh my God, I haven't, I, K-dramas, they usually mention BTS here and there, it's just pop culture, it is, like, huge, but to use it in that way, such a clever way. clever, I was just thinking that, yeah. Like, it was brilliant, and I should have known better, because honestly, when she put on No More Dream, I was thinking to myself, why would you? put on no more dream like that's so random i wasn't even thinking oh it's 2013 <laughs> there yeah is nothing else <laughs> yeah yeah oh my god it yeah just... but that's that's brilliant because you know to your point i mean just you know knowing the timeline and stuff but at the same time i mean we all like it's it's, it's very sneaky too because all of us like from time to time will put on an older track older song from your yeah. favorite artist and yeah. so it's like, yeah, that's that's that, that that's good. I, I like that. I like that. I got. I, I might have to check this show out. Yeah, yeah. You, you might. Um, 
I again, I think so far we only have six episodes have aired. They drop one on Monday and an episode on Tuesday, and there's it's a 16 episode season. I have already rewatched the first four episodes. Like, so I've seen the first four episodes twice. Well, that is how much I was just, yeah, like, after I finished watching it, I was like, I want to stay in this world. And honestly, I went back because I wanted to see if I would pick up on some nuances, which mm -hmm. I didn't really um, pick up on anything that I didn't the first time. But still, I just so far, I'm very entertained by this show. And the more it goes on, the more I am scared to m for my life that it's going <laughs> to end sad. <laughs> yeah. Because I have a feeling I know where we're going and I don't really like it, but mm -hmm. I also, that would make sense if it went that way. So, um, so we'll see, we'll see. But I, I just had to share that because every now and then when I find a gem, whether it be a K-drama or a random show, I have to express it. Um, and share with you all. And on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter. Oh, form, well, what no, X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, also, so I'm so like I'm so like thinking about your, the show that you've like shared <laughs> yeah. here. I'm just like I, I've got to find out more uh, from you after we finish here. But yeah, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M Polk, W I L L M P O L K. And you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>